Hey, my name is Nick from State of Woods Co. and Phantom CNC dealer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install any of the 7.5s or 5.5 kW vacuum pumps with your Phantom CNC system. If you want to know how to hook up the 2.2 vacuum pumps for your CNC machine, there's a link to a video right up here. When you receive your unit, it's going to come in several different packages. One of the boxes you're going to see first is the box for the VFD. This is what's actually going to control all the power going to your pump. You'll have a separate box that's going to house the muffler for this unit. You'll have one box that's going to have the air canister filter and the fittings that you need to connect to the pump. And then you're going to have the pump. This is going to come on a small little pallet inside of a wooden box. This pump weighs 85 pounds, so it is a team lift. Have somebody there to help you lift it because it's extremely heavy. Now the first thing I'm going to show you to do is how to hook up all of your piping, canister, and mufflers to your vacuum pump. The easiest thing to start with is the muffler. Now you'll see on the side of your vacuum pump, on the left side and the right side, there will be arrows of airflow. You always want to make sure when you're standing at the rear of the vacuum pump, the right side over here is going to have an arrow pointing out. That's where your muffler goes. It's all only going to just screw right in to the fitting inside that's built onto your pump. Now that the muffler is installed, the easiest thing to do is start with your longest fitting for this two and a half inch galvanized piping. So what this is, is this is going to bring your filtration and the airflow going into the pump out away from this fan housing here. Now we're going to put our 90 degree elbow on. Now a little helpful tip is it is nice to have your pump slightly elevated off the ground just to make it a lot easier to be able to screw all these items in place. All right, and last thing we're going to do is add this little small section of piping to our 90 degree. And this is going to elevate the canister filter above the muffler. And finally, we're just going to screw the canister filter right on to the top. Now you want to make sure that all these fittings are fairly tight. I like to have the canister filter perfectly vertical just so that if there ever is any type of debris getting into it, everything sort of settles to the bottom and you don't have any suction problems. Now these pumps are going to pull fresh air from this air intake regulator right here. The factory here in North Carolina runs every one of these vacuum pumps for 30 minutes. We do a lot of tests on them. We do temperature tests, we do amperage pull tests, and we do suction tests. Everything is controlled right here by this little intake. You don't ever want to mess with this because this intake is set at the factory for your specific pump to pull the correct amperage, the heat load, and the suction for this vacuum. This unit here is a VFD, a variable frequency drive. This is the powerhouse of this vacuum system. This is what's going to control the amperage. This is where you're going to start and stop your vacuum pump itself. So now let's hook up the electrical to the VFD and then we'll hook up the electrical from the VFD to the vacuum pump itself. Now when it comes to the electrical hookup of this unit, we really encourage an electrician to do this job for you. But if you want to do it yourself, I'm going to give you a little bit of pointers here. This unit runs off of a 50 amp breaker on 220 single phase. Traditionally in a shop or garage, most electricians have already run 220 lines in 10 gauge wire. And it's usually because there's no need for higher amperage pulls above 35 amps. But with this situation, we're going to be pulling 41, 42 amps on a 50 amp breaker. And so we want to go above that 35 amp load on the 10 gauge wire and increase it to 8 gauge wire. You'll see the difference between the two size wires. This is just going to allow for more amperage pull. So for our situation, we already had a lot of 10 gauge wire run for our previous 2.2 vacuum pumps on the 30 amp breaker. So I went ahead and put on a 50 amp breaker, 8 gauge wire for this setup. So the best thing to do is actually mount your VFD on the wall near your machine. This is where you're going to start your vac pump and stop it. The other good thing about it too, being up on the wall, is that all of your electrical is going to come in from the bottom under here. You don't want to mount this near your vac pump or on the floor because you need access to this electrical panel up underneath. So essentially, the breaker is powering the VFD. You can turn the VFD on every time you want to use it by flipping the breaker on and off. Or there are a couple options to hook up this unit and have another type of way of powering on this VFD. You can use a disconnect like you would on an outside unit for an a air handler or something like that. You can use a non-fused switch on it. Both of those are going to be good options. A lot of people like to just control it by using the breaker. 
Now to hook up power to the VFD itself, all you need to do is loosen both screws at the bottom and just be careful because there are cords and wires still connected to the control panel on the front. Now what we're trying to do is access these little ports down here for our electrical hookups. What you're going to do to bring power from the breaker to the VFD is use 8-2 wire. And what that means is that you have two hots and a ground. All that is going to do is go right underneath here on the left side. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your ground on the ground bar. It's got a green indicator there. And then your two hots are going to go right underneath on the R and the S. It's going to be the farthest three ports on the side of the left side of this VFD. Ground, hot, hot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention. We're going to pay close attention to the U, the V, and the W. When you're doing your ground, bring it all the way around and put it on the grounding bar, straight to earth ground. What's really important is the U, the V, and the W. This is what's going to have to match between the VFD and the vacuum pump. So whatever color you put on your UVW, make sure it is correct on the pump. So for me, I'm going to do red, black, white. So UVW, red, black, white. That will match on your vacuum pump. The most important thing about this vac setup, again, is the way that you wire up your panel here. You have a U line, a V line, and a W line, UVW. That's going to match what's on your VFD. So when you bring your wires in, you want to make sure if your wires on the VFD are red for U, you're going to put red to the U. If you're black on V, you're going to put black to the V. White is going to go to the white. The ground is going to go to this PE setting right here. This is an earth ground mount screw. So for this video purpose, I am going ahead and running a temporary line so that you can visualize how to hook this up. But normally I'm going to run my wire outside because my pumps always go outside underneath a lean-to just to help evacuate that heat and keep that loud noise out of my shop. Now, the most important thing, again, I try to keep reiterating this, is to get your wiring correctly when you're going from the VFD to the vac pump. So what I recommend is actually do one wire at a time. On my U setting here, I have my red wire. So I'm going to do red on the, U, on the VFD to the U line. Then I'm going to go to my pump and wire up the red there. Now that I've hooked up the U line, the red wire, from the U on the pump to the U on the VFD, I'm going to repeat it now for the black wire. For me, I'm just going to use black to V to V, and I'll repeat that for the W. So UVW matches UVW. It's just a good way of making sure that everything is the way it should be. Now that we've got all the electrical hooked up properly, the U to U, V to V, and W to W, we want to test it and make sure everything's right. The thing about these motors, they're all three-phase motors, you can control the direction in which the fan spins by the electrical connection. So if you've got wires crossed, you can spin this motor backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to have power hooked up to the VFD. We're going to hit the run button, but only for a moment. We're going to let it spin up a little bit. We're going to test and make sure that we've got air coming out of the exhaust on this unit. If we do, we're going to stop it and let it be fine. Now, I want to make sure that you understand, air is going to come out of the exhaust, air is going to suck in from the canister. Be careful putting your hand right here because there's a lot of suction on this unit. It will suck your hand into that pipe. Now, to power on the vacuum itself, you're always just going to hit the run button. Nothing else on this controller you can adjust. Everything has been pre-loaded and pre-programmed right from the factory on the VFD. Now that we've made sure that the electrical is all done properly and the motor's working the right way, it's time to hook it up to the table. Now the easiest way to do this is to actually go to your local big box store and get this little coupler. It's a three inch by two inch rubber gasket coupler with hose clamps on each end. Simply just put it right on there, tighten it down, and now you can attach either PVC pipe, uh, wire reinforced waste pipe, anything that you wanna do to connect the pump from here to the table itself. I hope this tutorial really helped you learn how to properly hook up your vacuum pump for your CNC machine. We have a lot of other tutorial videos on the website and there's a link to it right here and in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and have fun with your CNC.